Welcome to the Inquisitive Engineer. I've made some other videos about the Titan Submersible and some viewers have commented on whether or not the viewport window on the Titan Submersible failed and not the hull. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover some of the basic engineering principles behind designing a viewport window and also whether I believe the viewport window failed instead of the hull. The easiest way to make a viewing window would just be to machine a simple cylinder. And if we looked at a cross section example here, now this would have to be supported on the bottom by the titanium end cap. And there would have to be some blending of the titanium on the outside as well. Now the impractical thing about this for people actually inside the submersible is if you're looking out from this direction, you do not have a very wide viewing angle. And the taller and taller this gets, the narrower and narrower your viewing angle ends up becoming. From an engineering standpoint, water pressure is pushing evenly down the entire way. And if you sort of think of slicing sections through it here, this is all titanium, all titanium, and then all of a sudden you get to your viewport material and then just a little bit of titanium with a sharp corner here. And this sharp corner becomes a stress riser where if the titanium is going to start to fail, it will start cracking right here. So from an engineering standpoint, just putting a cylinder into the titanium housing with a sharp corner on it is not a good idea. So how do you fix that problem? Well, you wanna have a slow transition. And a way to get a slow transition is to taper the ends of the viewing window. And now, as the pressure is pushing down from the outside, mostly all titanium and then I get just a little bit of your viewing window and more titanium a little bit more viewing window a little bit less titanium even more so this transition of stresses is gradual and the benefit of having it this way is people who are viewing from the inside now can look at a much wider viewing angle so there is practical applications as to why on a submersible you make a conical window. Now there's also additional engineering benefits to this design. So there is a few ways that materials fail. Materials can fail in tension. Materials can fail in compression. and materials can fail in shear. Now materials can vary greatly from material to material. We know that steel is great in tension and compression and shear, but concrete on the other hand is great in compression, but horrible in tension. So how does the viewport window material compare in these three forms of failure? Well, it's not as good in tension and in shear as it is in compression. So if we're building a design, it'd be greater benefit to the submersible if we could go ahead and favor having compression forces applied to the viewport window. It just so happens to turn out that the conical shape of the window does exactly that. And the way you can think about it is 
as the water pressure is pushing in on that viewport, it's trying to shove it down through the smaller hole at the bottom, and the titanium housing is going to have to react and push on it sort of that way. And so now, as the water pressure is pushing down on it, the titanium housing is actually squeezing in on it. To understand how tension and compression forces are acting on that viewport window, let's just think about the example of a straight bar that is supported on each end and there is a force being applied down on it. That is going to want to bow this bar like this, right? It's trying to force the middle down. And as it's forcing the middle down, it's stretching the bottom and it's pushing in on the top. And so the act of stretching this is creating tension and the act of forcing in on the top is imparting compression. And what happens is somewhere in the middle here, there is a neutral point and above that, the compression forces get greater and greater and greater the further you get up from this neutral center. And the same thing on the bottom where the tension forces get greater and greater as you go further down until you get maximum tension at the bottom and maximum compression at the top. Now we intuitively know that if I made this bar thicker, that it would deflect less and it could take more load. Eventually what would happen is you're going to start failing at the place of maximum tension here or maximum compression there. Now we already know that our window material is not as good in tension as it is in compression. So if I wanted to predict when it was going to fail, it's going to fail start, starting down here. The formula to figure out the max stress in tension or compression is denoted by MC over I. Now, M stands for the bending moment that this force here is imparting on that beam. C is the distance from the neutral center line to the maximum stress location, whether being here or being here. And I is what they call the moment of inertia. And I has different formulas. And if we wanted to look at the formula of I for a rectangle with some base width and some height, I in that case is equal to B times the height cubed divided by 12. And all this formula is really telling you is how much the cross-section of that beam is resisting deflection from the bending moment that is being applied. So we can go ahead and plug some of these numbers into <clears throat> this formula. M is going to be the outside forces of the water pressing down on the viewing window. And C, because this was just a rectangular cross-section and your neutral point is perfectly in the middle, is going to be just one half the height of the viewport window. So we can go ahead and put one half H there. Divide that all by I, which is B H cubed over 12. And then we can go ahead and multiply both the top and bottom by 12 to get 
M6H over BH cubed. And we can knock some H's out, so you get 6M over BH squared. So stress max is 6M over BH squared. And the way we can think about that is M is going to be related to the water pressure on the viewport window. So that's not going to change. So that's going to be constant. The B, the base, if the viewport window was 12 inches at the base and it's going to be no wider, B is also going to stay the same. But we can't adjust the height or the thickness of the viewing window. And so if we double the thickness, you know, say originally the thickness was just one inch, if we made it two inches, well, two squared is four. So now all of a sudden, I reduce the maximum stress in the viewport window by a factor of four when I double the thickness. And if I actually tripled the thickness of the viewport window, three squared is nine, I actually reduce the maximum stress in the viewport window by a factor of nine. So the other way that the viewport window could fail is in shear. In shear, you can think of, if you had your hands together, feel like you're pushing one this way and one this way. You're going in opposite directions. And so what's happening in the design is you have your titanium housing here the water pressure is pushing in this way, and the titanium housing is actually pushing back up this way. And in each location along the cross section here, you're getting a force up there, but where it ends, you're getting a force down that direction. So how do shear forces and shear stress compare to the bending stresses for tension and compression? Well, shear stress is simply equal to force divided by area. The force is going to be the water pressure pushing in, but what about the area? Well, the area is going to be the cross-section where the viewport is just itself. And I believe that on the Titan Submersible, it was something about 12 inches in diameter. And the easiest way to think about it is like this can, right? If this was my viewing port looking out the area here that the shear stress is being applied to is the outside area of this can. And so the area here is going to be the height of the viewport window or the thickness of the viewport window times pi times the diameter. And in this case, if I double the thickness, the height is not squared here. So I am only doubling the effective area, which only reduces the shear stress by half. And if I would triple the thickness of the viewport, I am only reducing the shear stress by a factor of three and not by a factor of nine. So now the question is, how does the design of the conical viewport fail? Does it fail in shear or does it fail in a tension or compression bending moment? So there have been studies on these viewport windows for submersibles where the 
factors involved is the diameter of the viewport, the thickness of the viewport, as well as the tapered angle. And what they have found out is that it actually approximates a shear stress failure. I am actually going to provide a link to one of these studies if you want to go ahead and read about it. And what they have come to conclusion is that once you get to about a 90 degree angle, that the viewport really does fail in a shear force approximation. So what does a shear stress failure mean for the Titan submersible? Well, if the viewport was only rated to a third of the depth that they were actually diving to, that they were stressing it three times as much as what it was rated for. Now, these things are obviously built with some safety factor, but how much safety factor that viewport was manufactured with is unknown. The fact that the viewport window did not fail on previous dives suggests that the safety factor was greater than three. Now, to get a viewport window rated properly, he would have had to have had a viewport window made three times as thick because the sheer cross-section of the viewport window would have had to have been increased by three times. So do I think that the viewport window failed instead of the hull? No. On the other hand, I do believe that the hull failed, and when the hull compressed the air inside of the Titan submersible, it actually popped the viewport out the other way. So the viewport window was held in by a rather small ring that sort of clamped down over the outside diameter. And more than likely, when the composite tube imploded, you know, it, it pressurized the air so much inside of the pressure vessel that this pressure became greater and exceeded the pressure that the water could actually push in on it here. And there's such a small cross section here to shear off the center section of the viewport window. So when it collapsed, it actually forced and blew the viewport window out. And that is why you don't see it in the titanium hull as it was being offloaded off of the ship. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to leave comments.